So with the moon goddess cards that I have, I was saying, I had stopped recording, is I was in Ireland last year and I went to this workshop on yoga with a woman who's a Jungian psychotherapist and very involved in shamanism. And she said to me, she said, you received a transmission. Oh, everybody's gonna pull out their moon goddess cards deck now. <laughs> so she said, you received a transmission and I had never really thought about it like that. But then I was like, yeah, I guess I received a transmission. Like this idea that there's something that's calling you to do and you don't refuse the call, you actually follow the call. So I had learned about these niches. I had learned that um, every night of the month has a specific goddess who represents the, that night. And I often look at the moon quite a bit because I have to leave for work at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. every morning. So I have a deep relationship with the moon because I'm always looking at the moon because I get up so early. And a lot of times because I work in Hollywood, I'm on a stage or I'm in this kind of working so many hours that I don't have much contact with nature because I'm in stores buying things or I'm on movie sets. They're very artificial, but every morning and sometimes in the evening, but maybe may, mainly in the morning, I see the moon. And, it, it, and when I found out that every night of the lunar month had a specific goddess that was very inspirational to me. And it actually also talked to me in the fact that every day is important. Like people are always like, oh, it's the new moon, it's the full moon, and those are important. And I do think those are very important. But I like the idea of every day is important. Like every day is a special day. And it's so special that there's a goddess, there's a moon phase, there's a mantra, there's a yantra, there are mudras. So when I'm using this as meeting the mentor, because what if you, do, one way is the divination, you pick a card, but what if you can also look at the night or the day and figure out what the celestial energy of this specific day is? So I have like a calendar. You see, I have a lot of things written on it. And I counted from the new moon, which was last Friday. And um, it's tonight is a, is a new moon plus nine. So if you use my cards, it's Kula Sundari. And it's also, it's, um, it's a waxing gibbous moon. So this is today, the day we're in, Kula Sundari. And so this is if we would use to, this card as an oracle, as a mentor, as opposed to pulling one, which is fine, but this is a different way. It's working with the elements and nature. And so she's the goddess of inner knowing, inner knowing. And that's me like translating the Sanskrit and doing some meditation and getting some guidance and reading. And it's not me Googling Kula Sundari and it said inner knowing. I mean, it might now because if you Google it, maybe it's gonna go back to my writing, but it's me figuring that out you know, from her name. So it says, take some time to review your life. Okay, we're doing it, right? So that's the guidance. Take some time to review your life. Let go of unnecessary commitments and relationships. Invite in people and activities that bring you joy. So Kula means community. So I know Twy Twyla went to LMU for a 200 hour and Eden, our teacher always talks about the Kula right? The Kula, the group. And we're in a Kula right now. And her name is Kula Sundari, right? And there are lots of Sundaris. It's like a beautiful thing or no, there's Tripura Sundari. There's like a ton of Sundaris. And she's one of the Sundaris. She's the Sundari that um, matches the group. The ninth night. Okay, so, and then she has a mantra. Remember we were watching the video and it was saying mantras are a way to call in energy. 
So her mantra, and she has many mantras, but one of her mantras is just Om Kula Sundaraye Namaha. So it's just, when you ever have these mantras that are just the name and the yay and the namaha, it's just an invocation, like Pat invo it brought, brought energy in. So it's like saying, come on, come on Kula Sundari, it's your turn. Come on, please visit us. And I would chant that like, Om Kula Sundaraye Namaha. Om Kula Sundrahe Namaha. Om Kula Sundrahe Namaha. So she could be our mentor today, one of them. So let's learn more about her, inner knowing. Okay, so I'll read you about her. Kind, blissful, and smiling sweetly. So that's a good sign. Kula Sundari sits on a red lotus. She has 12 arms and six faces with three eyes in each face. Her complexion, clothing, and jewelry are red. Kula Sundari wears a gown with priceless gems. Her body is adorned with earrings, necklaces, amulets, waist chains, and anklets. Her breasts are decorated with clusters of rubies. In her right hand, she carries a kora mala, mala so she has the beads, a lotus, a pitcher, a drinking cup and a lemon. So she, when Pat was talking about bringing in all her, their, her guides, I always feel like these also, these moon goddesses have their totems they bring and they're representative of them. So she has her things that she has in, like I have my altar over there. It's got a lot of things on it. Um, maybe I can show you if you see it. Oops. I don't know if you can see it. All right. So just like um, we brought things today, she brought things. So she has, again, her right hand, she carries a mala. And that's significant of mantra and, and chanting and meditation, a lotus, a pitcher, a drinking cup, and a lemon. And her right hand forms the mudra of teaching and intellectual discourse. So when I was talking about like that teaching mudra. And we're teaching, maybe that's great because we're learning things from Pat, from me, and from whoever is really teaching this course, who I don't think is Pat and me, like somebody else is teaching it and we're just standing in. And then um, in our left hands are a book for learning, a red lotus, a golden pen. Everybody's writing today, right? A lot of people, I see them taking notes. She has a golden pen, so that's pretty good. Garland of gems, a conch shell. I have a conch shell on my own. And our remaining um, left hand forms the mudra of giving favor. So this is the mudra of fear not. And then this one, makes just when you do like this, it's granting boons or giving favor. So a lot of times you'll see people are the gods like this, right? It means fear not and I'm giving you a gift or a favor, you know? And sometimes you see it like this, you know? So she's doing all that. And I feel very, people said they felt gratitude. I feel a great gratitude to Pat that she's like giving us this gift. And um, Kula Sundari is the master of how to obtain all knowledge. Oh, I love this. She's the master of how to obtain all knowledge, including that of self. And we're working on that today, right? Self-knowledge, but also healing others. Ask her to help you reconnect with your inner knowing. Use her energies of virtue and kindness to assist you in living an authentic life. Borrow her pen and book to begin a journaling practice. Okay, so we already began, right? And purify yourself by drinking from her pitcher and cup. Didn't Pat tell us to drink a lot of water? And then let her bliss and kindness be reflected in you. So this is the idea that, um, I guess I wanted to talk about these cards for two reasons and I wanna fix my light in a second. It's just the first reason is that idea of following the transmission. So I had this idea about these goddesses, they were important. It took me, I think around seven years to make these cards with research in the US and India and talking to all these people and following through on it and I did. So I didn't refuse the call. I just did it at my own pace. And then the idea of 
that it, cards don't always have to be divination or you, you can use cards or you can use the seasons to tell you things. You can use the day to tell you things. Even in Hinduism and a lot of different uh, religions like Mars, I always teach like my friend Larry, I think some people were there. He said, why are you always teaching the goddess and yoga ninja? And I said, well, cause it's Monday and Monday is moon day. And the moon is the feminine. So I teach the feminine on uh, Monday. But if it were Saturday, maybe I would be teaching about Saturn. And even last night, I was in class in um, Shivananda and we're doing sun salutations. And I'm always like, why are we doing sun salutations when it's seven o'clock at night? Like we should be doing moon salutations. I always confuse, you know, I did them, but I didn't want to be doing them because I thought, we should be in harmony or not should, but I want to, I should use my I statement. I want to be doing moon salutations at night and sun salutations in the morning. And that's my guidance of trying to be as much in harmony. I want to do slower practices when I'm menstruating and more aggressive practices when I'm not menstruating. I want to do more aggressive practices with the waxing moon and more passive practices with the waning moon. And I feel like when I have those things in balance with myself, I feel more at harmony and I feel more open to receiving messages and more connected to the divine. So that's what I wanted to share about Kula Sundari and about my moon cards. And whoever doesn't have them, um, maybe I can get you some.